Hello guys, in the previous video we have talked about the alimentary tract and also the digestion in the mouth and esophagus. Now let's continue with the rest of the alimentary tract. So after esophagus, the food will enter the stomach. The stomach has a ring of muscle at the upper end which is known as sphincter. The sphincter will relax and opens up the passage from the esophagus. This will allow the food in the esophagus to be emptied into the stomach. So what happened in the stomach? As what happened in the mouth, there are two types of digestion happening over here which is chemical and mechanical. So this is a very important point to remember. Digestion of the protein starts in the stomach. So, the presence of food in the stomach will stimulate the production of gastric juice. Gastric juice contains the enzyme called protease, specifically pepsin. This is the enzyme that breaks down the protein. So, protease will break down the large protein into smaller molecules known as polypeptides. The gastric juice is acidic because it contains hydrochloric acid. This will help to maintain a pH of 1.5 to 2 because this is the optimum pH for the action of proteins. The acid can also help to kill any bacteria in your food, but not all. Our stomach also breaks down the food content physically by the action called churning action. So the keyword here is churning action. It simply means the contraction and the relaxation of the stomach muscles to break down the food and propel it forward. This contraction is created by the muscular wall of the stomach which consists of inner circular and outer longitudinal smooth muscle. So the food has now become semi-liquid in consistency. Now, let's have a look at the liver. How does liver help in the process of food digestion? This is a very popular question in your exam. So please take note. Liver is the organ that produces bowel. And this bowel will later be stored in the gallbladder. So remember, it's not the gallbladder that produces the bowel. It is the liver. The gallbladder only functions to keep the bowel. So what is bowel? Bowel is not exactly an enzyme, but it contains bowel pigments and bowel salts. Bowel pigment is what makes the bowel green in color, but what's more important is the bowel salt. Bowel salts help to emulsify fats, which means breaking down the fats into smaller droplets to facilitate further digestion of fats because this will increase the surface area for the action of enzyme which is lipase the digested food will also be assimilated here 
assimilated means stored. For example, the glucose will be stored as glycogen in the liver. Okay. Right beneath the liver, there's a green sac called gallbladder. And this is the organ that stores the bowel. So when the food enters, the gallbladder will contract to release the bowel into the duodenum, which is the first part of your small intestine. Now, the next stop is small intestine. Actually, small intestine is much longer than the large intestine. The term small intestine simply means that this part of the intestine is narrower in diameter but not in length. Okay, now let's look at the pancreas. Pancreas is the organ that produces the pancreatic juice. This pancreatic juice will be released into small intestine for digestion. And also, it produces hormones such as insulin and glucagon. Small intestine it consists of duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, and also ileum. So these two parts will make up the small intestine. Once the partially digested food enters the duodenum, the food will mix with the bowel and pancreatic juice. The bowel will come from the gallbladder and the pancreatic juice will be released from the pancreas. These two substances are important in digestion. Bowel will help in the digestion of fats and pancreatic juice contains various enzymes. First would be trypsin, which is a form of protease. And this enzyme will break down polypeptide into smaller peptide. And the second enzyme would be lipase. Remember, lipase L, it will break down lipid droplets, lipid L as well. So, it will break down lipid into glycerol and fatty acid. And the third enzyme would be the pancreatic amylase, which will break down the starch into maltose. And all these enzymes work at pH of 7 to 8. And this alkaline pH is maintained by the substance known as sodium hydrogen carbonate in the duodenum. At this point of the digestion, the protein and the maltose need to be broken down further because they are not exactly at their simplest form and the most soluble form to be absorbed yet. So, the peptide will further be broken down into amino acid. Maltose will be broken down into glucose.
by the enzyme called、uh, maltase. Lactose will be broken down into glucose and galactose. Sucrose will be broken down into glucose and fructose. Finally, after several hours in the digestive system, the carbohydrates, fats, and proteins are all in their smallest components, which are the glucose, fatty acids, and glycerol and amino acids. Now, they can leave the digestive system and enter the bloodstream to be used by the body. Inside your small intestine, there are many finger-like projections called villi, and these villi will give the ileum a larger surface area for absorption. Now, the undigested food will enter the large intestine. So the large intestine is made up of colon and rectum. In the colon, more water is absorbed, and the feces will become more solid. The feces is then stored temporarily in the rectum. After a period of 12 to 24 hours, as the amount of feces accumulates, the pressure in the rectum will increase, causing an urge to defecate. And the feces will be ingested through anus. And so, this concludes the human digestive system. Hope you guys learned. Thank you.